guys, welcome back to the channel. What do we have here today? It is a Springfield Armory product, a Springfield Armory XDM Elite 3.8 10 millimeter. So let's get this puppy out. This is one of my favorite offerings now that they have with the Springfield XD line. In my opinion, it is far superior to a Glock in this size. This would compare directly with my Glock 30, which as you can tell by just looking at this thing, this thing has all kinds of features on it that your plain old Glock 30 does not. So I'm sorry, Glock 29 in this case, because this is a 10 millimeter, but just a beautiful, beautiful looking firearm with a ton of features on it. Two magazines with it, right? A bunch of different uh, pieces in the back of your frame that you can change if you want to, to make your grip a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Different plates are involved here if you're gonna put an optic or whatnot on it. So Springfield does a good job of taking care of their customers as far as I know. I mean, I haven't talked to anybody who's had a bad experience with their customer service. And I can't say that about a lot of different companies that Young Beretta and I have had to deal with over the years. So, so here are the mags. Let's take a peek at those. Same style as before, right? I mean, they look very familiar. Just a little bit bigger, a little bit uh, wider than your nine millimeter or your forties come, but uh, you're looking at 10 plus one as far as 10 millimeter is concerned. And we all know that that is a pretty significant round, be it if you are hunting something on four legs or two. If your pistol's cocked, it'll have that cocked indicator right there. If your pistol is loaded, that little bump thing right there will come up a little bit. And that'll tell you there's a round in the uh, chamber here. This is where your optics gonna go. If you wanna change it out or swap it out, your sights. Yeah, those are pretty nice, especially on a small little pistol like this. Pretty nice sights, not bad at all. And this'll be best during daylight hours. Let's talk about the front serrations. They are pretty friggin' excellent and usable. And just charge it and then let it fly. Don't try to baby at home. I'm tired of seeing that. Grab the gun, rack it to the back and let it fly. That's how you get that thing chambered correctly. If not, if you goose around with this thing, you could end up with a double feed or something like that, and that would be horrible news for you if you're trying to defend yourself at that particular time. Slide lock here and here. So righty or lefty, you're in good shape there. Mag release, same thing. Let's try the mag release. I like the way that they just come flying out of there when they're empty. And I'm holding it level and it's just jumping out. This is a very nice add-on piece here. It gives it a nice funnel for you to be able to stick that magazine in. Go to the back of the, go to the back of the opening, right? And then push forward. You got the added safety right here. I'm so used to it on a 1911, it doesn't bother me at all. The one thing about it is you can't half-ass your grip or whatever, so you need to get that pretty high grip underneath this little beaver tail, if you will, that way it pushes that safety in all the way. And then when you grab your hold of your guns, you know, Rob Latham was saying one time, I hold it about as tight as I can hold it. I, I think that's true. I think you, you don't want to get a death grip on it, but you want to grab a hold of it like you mean to. You don't want it so loose that it's going to come flying out of your hands or if somebody grabs a hold of it that they can easily take it away from you and use it against you. So grab the gun. If you need to, to engage a bad guy who's closing distance, pull the gun back to your body and then just two quick shots if you need to, if they're up on you, right? XDM, front texturing is excellent. Back texturing is excellent. Quality control is pretty spot on every time I, I look at one or see one. So you've got to give them credit for that. They're building a really nice handgun over there. And again, my understanding is excellent, excellent customer service. About 27 or 28 ounces empty before you load it up. Make sure you get four or five extra magazines. So, you know, total of like six or seven mags is what you should have, especially these days, you know, with Biden and those boys on a hunt to try to, you know, take away some of your gun rights. You want to make sure that you've got enough magazines for each one of your guns. This is an excellent gun for $600. All right, guys, let's add a couple trigger pulls here so you get a good idea. Wow. Here you are bringing it up and you're firming up right there. Let's see if you got a little bit of squishiness or take up, you do. And then a little more, and then it breaks. This is very similar to the way the 45 is on reset. There it is, put pressure on it, a little bit of movement there. 
tiny bit of slop on the trigger and then it breaks. So again, it seems like a perfect combat-like, self-defense-like trigger. There you go, look at that much. So that much, once you hit the wall, you think you're at the wall, but you're not, and it squeezes a little more. So that's good camera work right there. And then it breaks. So there you go. Good trigger, not great. I think that's it for this one, guys. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on the Beretta 9mm USA channel and the CZ 9mm USA channel. Thanks, as always, guys. Much respect, and we'll see you guys on the next video.